Well, hello, guys. Hmm. Hmm. Well, hello, guys and girls out there, wherever you are. Welcome to another, no, not totally random video this time. This is actually the first episode of a new series here on this channel. And it's simply called, you guessed it, Movie Passion. Yeah, what is this? Well, it's basically me talking about various different movies that I like and what I like about those movies. And I hope that this way you will discover new movies and maybe you also have the chance to see certain movies in a different light and maybe appreciate them a little bit more. Or maybe you will start to watch movies that you wouldn't have watched before because you thought they were something completely different. So, yeah. And the great thing is, there is also going to be a German version of every video that I make in this series. So, I hope there is something for everybody. And without any further ado, let's get started with the first movie. So, I think it's only appropriate to start off this series with one of my most favorite movies of all times. Oliver Stone's Natural Born Killers. And... You know, this movie blew me away when I first saw it something like uh, 17 or 18 years ago. And the reason why it blew me away was because I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't know anything about this movie. And it was the very first movie that I saw that was just plain different and unconventional. It just didn't seem to follow any rules whatsoever. And, you know, for example, they were using so many different formats in this movie. You know, there is, we have scenes that are in color, scenes that are black and white, and they use a 35 millimeter as well as Super 8, 8 millimeter films. And there is even scenes where Mickey and Mallory are cartoon characters. So it's it's really weird and really bizarre. And then there's also those weird flashes, those weird images that always just appear for like a frame or two. And we also have those weird projections on the walls and outside the windows. And there is also this thing that throughout the entire movie the camera is never really 100% leveled. It's always slightly tilted. And this gives this movie also a very unique and kind of surreal look. Yeah, so what is this movie all about? Well, it's about various different things. Uh, one thing that this movie is all about is Mickey and Mallory. This weird couple and... They go on a killing spree where they end up killing 52 people within just three weeks. And while they are on this killing spree, they are of course being hunted by various different people. They are being hunted by the police. And most of this person, Jack Skignetti, and he actually only wants to capture Mickey and Mallory because he has a crush on Mallory. And he's also kind of really messed up, but we get to that later. And because Mickey and Mallory always keep one person alive to tell the story of Mickey and Mallory, uh, the media also gains a large interest in Mickey and Mallory. So Mickey and Mallory are also kind of being hunted by the media and because the media is giving Mickey and Mallory so much attention Mickey and Mallory become superstars they become celebrities and the media is represented by Wayne Gale a weird guy who is the producer and director of a weird television show called American Maniacs and his main goal is to get an exclusive interview with Mickey and Mallory because they are the hottest thing right now when it comes to uh, American Maniacs. And this already leads us to another thing that this movie is about. 
You know, the movie isn't just an action movie. It's also a satire. And it's criticizing the media and the media's obsession with bad and evil things and the media's obsession with violence. And it's also another thing that this movie has been criticized for. The fact that the movie is criticizing violence, but at the same time using violence itself. It, it uses violence itself. So it's kind of a weird thing. But um, yeah, it is a satire. And it makes it pretty clear that the biggest evil in this movie isn't Mickey and Mallory. It's actually the media and the media's obsession with violence. And like I said, the media is represented by Wayne Gale. And there's many scenes where we can see Wayne dressed up as the devil because the media is doing the same thing that the devil does. It's corrupting people's minds. It's seducing people into wanting things. And it's, it controls what people want, what people hate, what people like, and what people fear. So, um, yeah, that's, that's another thing that this movie is about. The fact that the media is evil and bad and television is corrupting people's minds. Well, today it's television and the internet. And... Another thing is that this movie is actually a very positive movie. It's also about freedom and overcoming your fears and defeating your inner demons and becoming a better person. And it's a very positive message. But, you know, with Natural Born Killers, we have the same phenomenon that we also have with uh, the Postal 2 video games where despite the fact that those games are some of the most violent and also most controversial games of all times, they are also some of the most positive games. And that's the same thing with Natural Born Killers. It's a very good, very positive movie with a very positive message or various positive messages but people just don't really see it because they are distracted by all the violence in this movie. So um, this movie also works with a lot of symbolism. And, you know, even if something seems totally random, it still has a deeper meaning. So, uh, for example... The first half of the movie is kind of like this constant battle between good and evil. And this battle is being represented by two animals that always appear in the uh, first half of the movie. And those animals are the wolf and the rattlesnake. Well, the wolf stands for all the bad and evil things. The wolf is the hunter. And many times it also stands for Mickey and his inner demons. And the other animal is the rattlesnake. And the rattlesnake stands for knowledge and wisdom and enlightenment. And also many times for Mallory. Which is why we also always see the wolf and the rattlesnake whenever Mickey and Mallory have an argument with each other. And... The fact that uh, snakes represent knowledge and wisdom in this movie is because the producer of this movie, Oliver Stone, is a Buddhist. And in Buddhism, snakes stand for wisdom and knowledge. And the snake also always appears when Mickey and Mallory learn something about themselves. And... The snake helps Mickey and Mallory to become better people. You see, Mickey says that only love can kill the demon. And he needs Mallory to defeat his inner demons because Mallory is his love. And it's a snake that helps Mickey to escape from prison because the snake is biting the horse of the person chasing after Mickey. So the snake helps Mickey to uh, get to Mallory and 
therefore defeating his inner demons. And when they are at the hut, we can also see that the bad wolf is outside, but the rattlesnake is allowed inside the hut. And after Mickey killed the, the Indian, Mickey and Mallory are being attacked by dozens of rattlesnakes and they are also being bitten by those rattlesnakes. But Mickey and Mallory don't die because those bites, they were just symbolic. You know, they, they are not being injected or it hasn't been venom that has been injected into them. It was actually knowledge and nobody dies because of knowledge, which is why Mickey and Mallory don't die after being bitten by those rattlesnakes. And yeah, the movie also uh, tells us that what Mickey and Mallory do is wrong because throughout the entire movie we can always see the color green and the color green always seems to appear before something bad happens, before somebody gets killed. And you know, in the o in the opening scene in the diner, we have the green lemon cake. We also have the green jukebox. And later at the gas station, there is also all this green light. And also um, in the drug zone, in the drug store, there is all this green light. So green is a very toxic color. And in this movie, the color green is telling us that something bad is about to happen because somebody is poisoned with fear or poisoned with something evil or with inner demons. And yeah, this is the movie's way of telling us what Mickey and Mallory do is in fact wrong. So this movie is not just another dumb violent movie that glorifies violence. It is telling us that what Mickey and Mallory do is wrong. And the movie also asks the question, is it possible that somebody is just born bad? That is just, that it's just fate if somebody becomes a killer. But at the same time, the movie also answers this question by clearly saying no. You see, everybody who is killing in this movie is doing it because of, because it is doing, they are doing it for a reason. That's what I want to say. You know, nobody becomes a killer for absolutely no apparent reason. Everybody is a product of their surroundings. So Mickey and Mallory, they had anything but a lucky childhood. They experienced a lot of bad and evil things in their lives. So, for example, Mallory has always been sexually abused or sexually molested by her father. And Mickey, it looks like his mother never really liked him. And his father was also a very violent person. He had an alcohol problem. He was violent towards both Mickey's mother and Mickey. And it was also um, his, his grandfather also was a very violent person, apparently. And... That's why Mickey and Mallory have those inner demons. And the interesting thing is also that the inner demons in this movie are being represented by a weird shift in the person's face. It looks a little bit like a funhouse mirror, but it also looks kind of scary and disturbing. But it's a very nice and interesting way of showing the inner demon. And... Yeah, then we also have uh, Jack Scagnetti, who also kills this woman in this motel, which is one of the most disturbing scenes in the entire movie, despite the fact that he is actually supposed to be one of the good people because he's a cop. Um, but yeah, even he doesn't do it for no reason. You know, he does it because... When he was a little kid, he had to witness his mom getting shot by Charles Whitman. And therefore, he has a very weird relationship with women. 
and that's why he also kills people or at least this one woman so yeah it's it's very clear that everybody is just a product of their surroundings and another thing that makes this movie really great is of course the love which is a constant thing in this entire movie the love between mickey and mallory it grows stronger throughout the entire movie and i really love that and this movie also contains one of the best and weirdest wedding scenes in movie history you know mickey and mallory they stop on top of this bridge and mickey is proposing to mallory and then they cut their hands and they put their hands together and their blood is mixing together and it falls down into the river beneath them and the river is flowing or floating into no flowing into uh, the ocean it's it's a very weird scene but it's also a very romantic scene and i just love it and there is no better wedding scene in movie history and yeah another thing that makes this movie really great is the excellent soundtrack i mean the soundtrack is just absolutely brilliant in this movie we have songs from l7 and bob dylan and cowboy junkies leonard cohen all the way up to nine inch nails and peter gabriel it's it's just an awesome fantastic soundtrack and it really makes the movie even better than it already is so yeah and you also have to give credit to all the people in the movie i mean they went through a lot i mean when mallory is fighting with jack skignetti she actually really broke his nose by accident and they just kept filming and when they are in this prison all those people that you see those aren't actors those are real prison inmates and most of them were in this prison because they killed somebody so to have all those scenes and those weird riots with with all those real prison inmates it's a very very weird thing and there is also a lot of other things in this movie you know for example the person that disappears at the beginning of the movie and this is the guardian angel this his name is owen and he appears later at the end of the movie to save and rescue mickey and mallory so there is just so many things in this movie i hope i didn't forget anything because it's just so much there are so many things and that's why this movie is one of my most favorite movies because on the on the surface it seems like another dumb violent movie but it is a movie with a deeper meaning with a lot of positive messages and I just love it so yeah that's it that's the first uh, series or the first episode of this new series I hope you liked it and yeah thanks for watching and I see you in the next episode or in the next totally random video whatever comes next and don't forget that there is also a German version of this movie in case you want to watch that so thanks for watching and I see you in the next. Bye.